Although tower gardens are incredibly easy to grow out of, there are a few things that you definitely should know off the bat that are going to save you a lot of headache from the start. Today I'm going to go over five things, uh, five mistakes in particular that people make when they're starting off their tower gardens. These mistakes are easily avoidable, so you can learn from this video and apply this information for yourself. So let's get right into it. The first mistake that I see people make, which leads to dead plants and sad gardeners, is they try to transplant their seeds into their garden too soon. I've even seen people try to start their seeds in their tower garden, and that leads to really bad results. What you wanna do is have a separate germination station where you start your seeds. Allow your seeds to get really tall, really hardy and healthy. Allow the roots to grow through the bottom of the rock wool. And once this plant seems like it's kind of in its like preteen years and it's ready to be transplanted, it has quite a few leaves and it's nice and healthy, then you can put it into your tower garden and it'll thrive. The second problem I see with a lot of tower gardens is too much red light right off the bat. So early plants don't need a lot of red light and red light causes stem elongation. So when you first put your plants into your garden, if you put them in like direct sunlight or under a grow light that's really close, then you'll see your plant stems elongate. I've seen some really weird things happen in tower gardens like vines of lettuce uh, because they elongated due to the red light. So when your plant's really young, I recommend trying to bathe it in as much blue light as you possibly can and cut back on as much red light as you can. Red light is incredibly important for photosynthesis, so don't leave that out of the equation, but just make sure it's a nice balance between red and blue light in the early stages or your plant's gonna grow away from the tower Way too fast, the stem's not going to be strong enough and it'll probably fall down or bend in half. It's probably not going to make it. All right, this next one really only applies for indoor tower gardeners, and that is not self pollinating your uh, fruiting plants. So, I've got a lot of comments in the past about people who have had, you know, cucumbers and zucchinis that never grew. Uh, actual fruit. They say they flowered and the flowers grew and then fell off and nothing ever came of them and they were growing inside. Well the answer there is just to self-pollinate yourself. You can just get a q-tip and get in there and get the pollen off the stamen and then take it over to the pistol and apply it with the brush. It's literally just a male and a female plant and there are hermaphrodites in the bunch but once you start to notice what the stamen looks like and what the pistol looks like it becomes really easy for you to get in there with just a q-tip or something and uh, and do the pollinating yourself so bow chicka bow wow number four i see a lot of tower gardens with empty net pots because of algae when algae gets your plant and it's young and in its developmental stages the plant will actually get algae on it itself and the algae is eating all the nutrients and oxygen from the plant's roots if it's on the rock wool the way that i avoid algae and tower gardens is simply cover the top of your rock wool with really any kind of uh, like loose gravel something that's going to be large enough to not fall through the net pot um, but also small enough to cover the whole area thoroughly. I, hydrogen clay pebbles work well, although they can be really annoying and fall out of the net pot. Um, you can be creative with this. Just figure out a way to cover that net pot. I actually recently started using pool noodles that I cut into pieces and then wrap them around the plant. That seems to work really well to keep algae from the rock wool because what you're trying to do is prevent light from hitting your rock wool while it's wet. The rock wool is pretty much always going to be wet enough to grow algae, so we just have to keep the light off of that rock wool to keep the algae from taking all the nutrients and oxygen from our plants. All right, number five. This one is crazy to me that people do this and that the Tower Garden Company rec recommends this because there's easy ways around it and I really don't think you need to do it. Um, number five mistake that I see people make is they pull the roots when they get to their nutrient chamber. I, a lot of people do this and I think the main reason is because they're afraid that the roots are going to get sucked into the pump. And if your plants are way, way, way too big and they're completely filling up the nutrient chamber, then maybe it's just time to replant and move those into something different like their own individual little deep water cultures. I don't recommend ripping the roots off once they reach the nutrient chamber. Those roots are connected to direct growth. When you rip roots off, the plant goes into a mode of um, it sends a lot of hormones like auxin to the root system to try to regrow those roots as fast as possible and it's wasting a lot of energy and doing that rather than focusing all of its energy on 
growing and creating fruit for you. So I don't recommend ripping the roots out. Just let them go and, and cover your pump up to make sure that you don't get any roots inside of there. So don't forget to check Humble Growth Hydroponics for your free resource to a ton of guides on tower gardening and hydroponic gardening in general. I also have my Mastering Your Tower Garden series, which is a huge 14 part comprehensive Mastering Your Tower Garden series. So check that out uh, if you wanna take this to the next level and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's grow together.